This is an Energizer 9 volt battery. It came out of one of our smoke detectors. This is my test jig. So I've had a constant resistance load attached to this meter for quite some time. Started it out with a 470 ohm resistor and then I switched it down to 100 ohm in parallel with this. And I let it run like that for quite some time and then I just switched back to the 470. The graph on the left is looking at the HP 34401A. This is looking at the data off of our test fixture. You can see the current profiles match between the two. This is looking at just the voltage. And this would be just the current. And this is looking at the power in milliwatts. I'm still pulling about 13 milliamps out of this battery right now, about 13.3. And the battery voltage is currently 6.9 volts. So I suspect that this battery, even going through this abuse, is probably still charged enough where it could run my UT61E, even with the modifications. All right, so this is the modified UT61E. This is some data I've been collecting for this meter since I've had it. I'm just trying to get an idea how this thing drifts over time. Alright, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take our battery off the test jig. Let's see if this will turn on. There you go. See the low battery indicator isn't even on. It's pretty impressive. Now the question then is, I wonder how much current this thing actually draws. Again, this meter has quite a few modifications to it. One of them is this auto dimming backlight. So one of the things I've been using this test jig for is to measure the battery life of the meters. I've basically been running them all to the same standard. These are my AA eliminators. Unfortunately, these don't want to stay in place. We'll just use a couple of clips. So the way I've been running these, I have the meter on, the backlight is off, I don't have any other features enabled, and I'll place it in its AC volt mode. As you can see it's on AC now. Again, we don't want the backlight enabled, so I'll just set this up right. When I enable the backlight, and I'll measure the current with the backlight on. Next I'll just select all the various settings. Different modes will have different requirements for the current draw. And then I go back to the AC volt mode. So again with the backlight off. What we'll do now is start to drop the battery voltage. And the way I measure the cutoff voltage is I basically look for half of the nominal current.
go ahead we'll select post process this will be all the data that I've collected so far this is a table showing all the data the meters are sorted by their lowest life to the longest life it's interesting the longest life meter I have happens to be a free one from Harbor Freight it's the DT 833 you see the next one on the list though is the Fluke 17B plus of course the battery pack that's used for the two of these are different the Harbor Freight's using a standard 9 volt transistor battery versus the Fluke 17B plus which is using two AA you can see we have nominal battery life which is what I'm sorting on and then the minimum and the minimum is based on whatever the maximum load is with the backlight off just selecting the various modes so our unity didn't do as well as some of the meters but again this meter has quite a few modifications to it another member on the EV blog had measured their stock UT61E they measured a nominal current of 3.2 milliamps they calculated it out to 102 hours with their meter so still not the greatest certainly not the worst uh, by far the worst two meters that I've got are the unity UT181A course that's using a lipo pack second worst is the Gossen again that meter only has two AA batteries in it of course if you turn the Bluetooth interface on that meter it'll suck the batteries dry pretty quick that meter actually has provisions for an external battery pack 